What's up guys, it's James back again, doing my thing that you know and love, you know the deal. I took a deck I don't usually use and I topped a pretty big tournament. On this occasion, this was taking a dive into Diva Hero for uh, Edison Worlds hosted on Format Library, not to be confused with RBET Rulers hosted on Keegan Server. Um, we might need a later drama breakdown to explain that, but suffice to say that these are both pretty uh, prestigious tournaments near the end of the season that are invitationals, so it's kind of the best players that have been grinding and playing Edison in online tournaments all season competing in these. So let's talk about why I decided to bring Diva Hero. <coughs> um, since Richmond and RBT Rulers concluded, I decided I wasn't too happy with the fish deck, um, it's still super strong and I still like playing it. We'll probably bring it out at some later points, but you know, I bricked in the finals, which cost me, you know, a couple thousand dollars and I got DV'd for my lunch money out of RBT rulers. Um, so I was ready to play something that had a little more like game to it. Um, whenever you're playing a deck like that without a lot of interaction, um, you don't have a lot of defense. You're basically at the mercy of your opponent's powerful hands rather than being able to play a back and forth game. Um, and you know, you, sometimes you're forced into making plays where they're, you're just hoping they don't have anything. And I like playing decks that have the ability to, you know, make big pushes and do big combos. But given I am pretty proficient in playing, you know, micro grind games um, where you could say the better player usually comes out on top, um, it's kind of a disservice to me, to myself, I feel, to play like true combo decks because I'm cutting out a part of the game that I can often get an edge in. Um, so I decided to pivot to a slightly more, you know, dueling deck in Diva Hero. Um, and that's really just always been a deck that's interested me. I actually topped a regional with it back in uh, around Edison time, uh, right when Absolute Zero got released. And I always enjoyed the, you know, turn one Stratos, turn two Diva, Pitch Mally, Miracle for Game, these combos. And you get to take advantage of these limited bombs, Dark Crime Return, uh, big dark engine of Greffer and Allure, and uh, but I really hadn't touched it at all since the Edison Revival, despite it being like one of the most successful decks, especially you know in the first year we were hosting tournaments. And there were like Silchus Ruin, a true hero, uh, Oscar I believe his name is, who's won a bunch of tournaments in California, um, and they're all you know making a case for it being a really top tier threat. And my experience playing you know against the deck is just always open the nuts, and you know I'm talking about. Specific turn two sequences, like, you know, turn one Stratos, turn two Diva, uh, Stratos, and then you turn two Greffer, or you have, like, Stratos, you set a Windblast, you pitch the Mali, and then you have, like, Plague or Diva follow-ups, Stratos and Windblast and Caius, you know, there are a lot of, like, two to three card combinations that, when you're on the receiving end of them, just make it feel like, oh, they're just going to do this to me every game. So even though I may very well be, like, the saltiest player alive, and I'm happy to chalk these losses up to like, oh, they're just sacking me every time. Um, when it happens over and over and over again, you kind of start to think like, oh, maybe my estimation of how often the deck's supposed to do this is just kind of off. Maybe they are actually more consistent than I think. And so with that in mind, I wanted to give a try for myself. And this is the list I ended up on for uh, the Edison Worlds. So this is where I ended up. Uh, not anything too crazy, you know, I, I, I would never say I'm reinventing the wheel here. This is a pretty uh, standard DV Hero deck, although we'll touch on, you know, a few of the defining features, I feel. Um, you know, I ended up maxing Windblast and Upstart. I kept basically the same monster lineup that I see most people playing. Realistically, you know, 32 maybe of this deck is uh, pretty standardized. And uh, I did like the Tech Spirit Reaper. I think it helps you stall out in the early game and you can get some good hits in. It's a card that's been uh, performing well in a lot of decks lately. And, you know, I had the Upstart Goblins, which really, I had 37 cards that I liked, and I couldn't really think of three more. So I just decided to toss them in and uh, run it. And, uh, you know, there's a few other things that I think are uh, notable. You know, I'm not playing a fifth water. I'm just playing three Diva, one Gilman. Um, no Treeborn, no Snowman. And uh, I have a pretty limited defensive lineup, trap lineup. Uh, where I'm not playing Mirror Forest, I'm not playing any of this Deeper Than Bottomless. Um, I have Call of the Haunted in there, which I think is a kind of uncommon pick. But, uh, you know, honestly, the way that I built this deck, and I can show some of my prior versions, um, is, 
really just trying to maximize like the same combos that I felt like people were doing to me. You know, I was trying stuff like Bubble Man. I was trying, you know, Snowman, uh, more waters. This is before I added Upstart. So these were like what I was filling these flex slots with. Kogodia, Treeborn. Um, I had Decrees in the side, but I ended up cutting them last minute. Uh, these are all, you know, going to be a couple cards different. I tried a version with a small zombie package. I tried uh, Treeborn. Didi Warley, this is a weird version that I just got kind of frustrated with. Trooper or something I tried at one point. But this is basically where I ended up. And uh, yeah, you know, it's nothing too crazy, but um, I was pretty happy with how it flowed. And I just felt like it really could maximize kind of the, the pressure. You know, one reason that I was attracted to the deck in the first place is like, I like the ability to go wide, like I said before, and do these crazy combos where I'm making Stardust to Absolute Zero and Dark Arm, you know, whatever. But the one good thing about uh, any deck that can make absolute zero, I guess, is you kind of have a built-in defense. That's part of the reason I thought I didn't need as many like real traps because, um, yeah, like if they try to crack back and pop your board, then Miracle's gonna, then zero is gonna counter it. So in practice, you know, weirdly, I, I didn't really find it to play that way. I felt like uh, I was mostly using Miracle as an extender and like I would hold it, hold it until I could OTK maybe. But, you know, against mo more of the fair decks, you can uh, kind of play it that way for sure. And uh, the side, you know, uh, I kind of switched some stuff last minute. If you looked at those other versions, I had Decree for a while, and I was like maxing Snowman Eater, and I also sided with Neos Alias. But at the last minute, I decided that like that plan still really wasn't helping me that much in Blackwing, and the chain ability of Dust Tornado, I felt like would be useful. So I swapped it out, and two bottomless double dust, and I added a breaker, which I, I thought could help against a Vayu, because I was finding like their early game like Raiko Hamster stuff to be kind of difficult to deal with. But um, you know, other than that, uh, one Dino, one Vanity, you can send the Dino off, Future Fusion, call it back maybe, just like little things. But uh, I also cited the Royal Oppression, that's maybe the, the most unique thing about this. But ironically, um, the only match that I cited it in against is round one against Christia Sworn, and I didn't draw it. So um, you know, it's meant to be kind of like in Christia Sworn, the deck that also special summons a lot and occasionally hides oppression. You can make a big board, set the oppression behind it. This deck has a much easier time making Stardust than probably any other deck in the format. So Stardust Oppression can kind of shut things out. They really don't expect it. It can be nice against Frogs, Christia Sworn, Dragon Turbo. You know, sometimes I'll just bring one in against more normal decks like the Mirror or Zombies, but I can bring two against things that really need it like Dragon Turbo or Christia Sworn. Um, I found it to be pretty good in testing, kind of not sure, but that was like one of the only things that I felt like I was doing new with the deck, and so I didn't want to cut it, and uh, yeah, it just happened to not come up at all. But uh, yeah, that's the deck. I mean, it's it served me pretty well on ladder. I was having really mixed results, but at the same time, um, I went 5-0 at a Locals for the first time. Uh, shout out to Gamer's Choice and all the guys there. But yeah, something was just telling me that I didn't want to switch back to Bayou. Um, I should just keep playing this deck, even though I was having kind of mixed results with it. And lo and behold, I still ended up in top eight, although uh, I'm not super happy with overall how I did in this tournament. On the tournament itself, I figured I'd give you guys a few replays. This was my round one against Gia. Um, she was on Christia Sworn, and Gia is a, a player that's done really well in both uh, Edison and Goat, so definitely very experienced in that regard. Um, but I definitely just got kind of sacked by Christia game one, milled the perfect amount of fairies, but then uh, I was able to take it home game two and three with a clutch mind crush play and uh, maybe a little luck with uh, killing her in game three. But um, in, I'm not gonna cover every single replay, but in round two and three, I played uh, heroes, uh, SDL Killa and a guy named Sippy, I'm not really familiar with, but uh, they were kind of closer than I wanted them to be because I think the deck should have a pretty good hero matchup but uh, <coughs> I was able to take both with some pretty tight play I um, also just if you guys want to do more in-depth replay review uh, I'll probably do a stream tomorrow if this goes up Monday night uh, then just doing more in-depth replay analysis and talking more about the deck so stay tuned for that for sure but uh, yeah, two and three were hero, which I was able to win. So I started off 3-0 and it's six rounds of Swiss. Um, so I was already kind of halfway there. 
the uh, round four was where I would take my first loss against Yondaime. He uh, is a pretty strong Blackwing player from Italy, and he's had a great run this tournament and also, I believe, is still number one on ladder. So he went undefeated in Swiss, I'm pretty sure, in in this Edison World Championship event. Um, game one was a total wash. I won, and game two and game three, he kind of just had the perfect crack back to the boards I was able to make. Um, pretty unfortunate for me. I'm not entirely sure if I could have played it any different or if kind of he just had the goods. But uh, I was able to actually draw out one of the games. I top decked a miracle, and um, but... Yeah, unfortunately, I just couldn't get there, and I took my first loss of the day. But round five, I played against uh, Icarus, is his name, uh, and he was just on more, much more standard Frog Monarch. He was playing like Light and Darkest Dragons and stuff like that, Battle Faders, Creature Swaps, I believe. Um, but I got so lucky against this guy. I mean, if I'm saying uh, Yondaime or anyone else in this tournament got lucky against me, Honestly, you gotta feel bad for this guy because I feel like I just like you know multiple perfect draws in a row, um, and yeah, you know is what it is. But uh, we had a good match, and you know, sorry, maybe next year. But that brings me to last round of Swiss, which was against Turna, who's a quite strong uh, value player as well. He's had a great year, very successful, won a couple of events, I believe, and <laughs> I. Honestly, don't feel I played that well this match. Um, game two, I had a great hand. I should have easily taken it home. He did get pretty fortunate draws in some situations, but um, it was kind of my game to lose, and I don't think I played that tight, whereas he played, you know, competently enough to win. So on, with that, I took a second loss, which all of the X1s, uh, five ones are guaranteed to top this event, but... I was still able to make it in because my losses were Gia, who I was ended up being her only loss, and uh, Yondaime and Turna. So we all made top cut, and it was all good. I was kind of mad for a minute there. But in top eight, I would play against Samu, who was playing a Vayu version very similar to one that I've played in the past. And he's also had a really strong year with this deck. The top eight was just completely stacked with very talented players. But uh, I, I kind of think I made some bad plays in this one as well. Um, misread a Raiko game one and in game three i just you know played really cautiously in a way that maybe i shouldn't have but um either way it was going to be a tough match to win and i got some really unfortunate breaks i mean even with the way it went down game three um he basically had to top deck a gores and that sealed my fate but you know overall uh diva hero is a deck I enjoyed, and as I have said multiple times in other videos like these, you know, I enjoy learning new things, I enjoy testing stuff out and trying to come up with a kind of optimized version, but am I sure that I'll keep playing it? Eh. You know, having been knocked out of two big tournaments now by Vayu makes me think that maybe I just have to kind of go back to my roots, but uh, this tournament is still ongoing, I believe, with two Vayu decks in the finals, so that's also a pretty strong case that it's a very, very... Uh, strong deck to consider but I mean there's always more decks to explore I have new ideas all the time um, to counter the meta or just update old things that I've been working on so you know I'm excited to see what the future holds for sure and this was a great tournament um, the prize pool was really nice and kind of thrown together almost last minute I would say so all things considered um, I thought it was a great time and the fact we had two invitationals kind of back to back was kind of funny but at the same time it, it really showcased a month of talented edison players so with that i'm going to sign off you know i want to say you know shout out to my team uh smoker almost top but they also helped me a lot with this deck marcus ledio necro even um who i i stole some of his ideas and uh also a true hero and silchus and you know all these people that came before i really did study their deck list but Again, tune into one of the streams I'm going to do if you guys want to hear more about my deck building process or maybe if it really is worth it, I can do a second video on that. But peace, guys. I was happy to make top eight and uh, hope you guys enjoy my take on DV Hero.